lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you and for tuning in to the NAACP Forum. You already know, we are Brockton's Choice for Civil Rights News. I have an exciting guest tonight. Her name is Shahara Jagu. Did I say that correctly? Yes. Well, welcome to you. We love thank your you. name, by the way. Thank we you. We love very cultural. Thank very, you. Very cultural. <laughs> How did you get the name? I got to ask. I got to ask that question. Uh, so my mother gave me that name. Yeah, of course. Thank she went all the way to Africa to get that name. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> bless her, bless her. That's a beautiful name. So you're joining us because of the um, Women's Pipeline for Change. You're going to talk a little bit about that history. But we need to learn a little bit about you. I read your bio. It's very, very impressive. Oh, you're working you. right now as an Associate Director for Substance Abuse Prevention and Special in Initiatives with Youth Build. We know that there is a, there's a large amount of issues with respect to substance abuse. Yes. Tell us a bit, little bit about your roles. So um, I actually been in the prevention field now for about 15 years. Okay. I started out doing that work in Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, mm -hmm. just by chance. Um, so it's funny where things will take you. Mm -hmm. um, once I got involved in the work, I started working with at-risk youth, right, um, right. Most, mostly ages 15 to 20. And they were going through a lot of issues and challenges with mm -hmm. substance abuse issues. And I did a lot of direct service work, building coalitions, mm -hmm. community mobilizations, trainings in middle schools and high schools, teaching high school students about uh, uh, what the dangers and consequences of drugs were. Mm -hmm. um, and then they would go and do peer education with middle schoolers in the middle school system. Um, and then we did youth leadership conferences. So as I start to build in that, I saw that this is something I really have a, you know, a passion for. Mm -hmm. um, and really being able to impact people's lives, especially young people, because if we can get them at a younger age, they have a better chance and better hope. Tell me a little bit, you, you mentioned an age range. What was the age range again? Uh, 15 to 20. What is what was the greatest challenge, or what is the most common drug that they would be uh, are taking? At the time, it was it, it was alcohol, and really? it's still alcohol is still number one. But right behind it is marijuana right now. So. That begs me to ask, you know mm -hmm. that marijuana has been legalized in the Commonwealth. Dispensaries will be opening yes. up here in the city of Brockton. We're going to get to what you came here for, but you know, you have the skill sets and the competency to be an expert in this, this, discuss, this discussion. Do you have an opinion or a position with respect to what they're going to be doing in terms of the marijuana dispensaries here in the city of Brockton? Uh, it's, it, it's a hard thing because I... Well, did you vote yes or no? Can we ask you? I didn't. Um, okay, all right. <laughs> Fair. Trying to put her on the spot. Sorry, sorry. Um, my position is really just about awareness and um, <clears throat> making sure we educate our community right. about the health consequences of that and other things that come with that. So young people tend hmm. to think that if they can smoke marijuana because it's natural, right. but you can't get a job because most jobs drug test you. Right. So it's just like you can't go on your job and drink. You right. can't go on your job and be high. So it's things like of that nature, you know, so personally I think people could take either position. But right, right. When it comes to the health of our community and, you know, the wealth you know, wealth of our community mm -hmm. and all of those dynamics, I just think that we just have to continue to make our young people aware of what those consequences are and those choices. So tell me, what is the woman's pipeline for change? The Women's Pipeline for Change is an initiative that started in 2008 um, from a group of progressive women of color um, in leadership here in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And what they saw and uh, what they were hearing is that they felt like there's a lot of barriers and challenges for women of color in Massachusetts to run for office. Really? Yes. And they start to have these conversations with other women across the state right. throughout Massachusetts, women right. of color specifically, asking them, you know, what, what are the challenges? What are you facing? Mm -hmm. A lot of them felt like they didn't have a voice. A lot of them didn't feel educated on the topic enough. Okay. Um, and so based on these conversations, they talked to over 100 women. And they said, you know, we have to do something. 
And out of that came the Women's Pipeline for Change. So through a democracy partnership, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they started to develop different initiatives around it and started to do a pilot. Um, they did a few women conferences and some charity work mm -hmm. and raised some money. And now they have this initiative that is um, basically a hub um, incubating under the mass vote um, area. Really, really? Yes. So mm -hmm. let me just ask you, when they went out to try to identify barriers, but it looks like they already knew there were some barriers, mm -hmm. hence the group needed to be developed. Develop, mm -hmm. What were some of the barriers that women of color were experiencing with respect to the politics of this commonwealth? Well, there were race issues, um, for sure. You know, really? women of color yeah. trying to get into office yeah. is very difficult. Um, when you say, well, sure, sorry to cut mm -hmm. you off, but I always tell, tell kind of mm -hmm. tell people it's just like being in my living room, just having a conversation. So we just we're just having a soft conversation. Mm -hmm. Identify some of the what, what what would be some of the racist practices or what did they experience? Because and the reason why a lot of people would have me ask you that question, we are a pretty democrat democrat state. Mm. What were some of the challenges? Well, because they're black. Period. They're, they're black, or they're from another um, country, or they don't speak English. Barriers around raising so, money. There was barriers around income. Um, so if a lot of these women come from low income right, communities, right. so they don't have the means or the resources to run in these positions as well. So that kind of knocks them out the box. Absolutely. Right. So that's another um, thing that kind of silos them away from that, mm -hmm. which that's why the pipeline is so important because right. we felt they needed to have the resources. They need a network right. and a support system to make sure that they can advocate if they want to. Are you nonpartisan though? Can a Republican, can a black Republican conservative woman join this pipeline, join your cause? Yes, she can. The, are you sure there's room at the table there's for that? There's room at the table. Really? Yes, because- Do, do you have any of them? Um, I, there's a few- That you know of. Not that I know personally, <laughs> right, right, but right. Um, you know, it is nonpartisan. It's right. not, you know, one or the- we're, we're, our goal is to give women of color an opportunity to have a platform. Regardless of party. To ha yes, regardless okay. of party, to have a voice um, and to be heard in their communities and, and empower them. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times in these you know, situations, women just feel like, oh, well, I don't know anything. I don't mm -hmm. have enough information. Mm -hmm. They shy away from it and then they don't get involved. But then there's so many things and issues that they're dealing with, mm -hmm. they need to be heard. Because it relates to everyday things that are happening to them and other people as well. So f from 2008 to 2019, mm -hmm. give me some of the greatest uh, uh, success stories that you have had. I, I, can I say something? Can I say Ayanna Presley or is that not yes, a part of your, is, your that movement? Is a, that is a success story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Ayanna Presley yeah. was part of this pilot Ex of those excellent. phenomenal black women. Yes. Um, she was a part of hubbing this and making sure that, that we were able to bring some progressive women together and start this initiative. Mm -hmm. I'm early in this role. Um, okay. I just came on not too long ago. So I'm very excited about it because mm -hmm. I think that even though it started in 2008 and it still has a ways to go, I think this is going to be cutting edge, right. you know, because it is specifically for women of color. Right. And it provides the education and the resources and the skill development to do that. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, has a lot to offer women who want to be in politics and not necessarily run for campaign, but civic engagement mm -hmm. and government and um, just being in public leadership, you know, and having a platform there. You know, a lot of times in companies and organizations, women of color feel like they can't apply for a position of CEO or mm -hmm. VP because they don't have maybe the resources or the education and things like that. It's sometimes not even that. It's just having the, you know, something like this to push you, you know, to say, you know, here's some resources. Maybe if you had this, you know, skill set, you would be able to run for this position or you could apply for this position. And the Woman for Pipeline for Change does that through a spiral of workshops. So, Give us an example of some of the workshops that you all have. So there, what happens with the Women's Pipeline for Change is mm -hmm. that it's called, a, it's called a spiral. So there's different stages. There's okay. eight stages. Um, and I'll just give you a couple. There's working with women in office. Um, there's introducing, in, in, excuse me, introducing women to women that are, are currently in office. Okay. And also, so people make themselves available that are currently yes. in office. Oh, yes. That's, so there's that's a that's exciting link. Exciting and yes. excellent. Right. There's a linkage. Right. And those women who actually pilot this and started this, the women like Ayana. Yeah. We try to keep them as an alumni so that they have, you know, they're sort of a link to this and they continue to see what's going on with this as well. So wow. they're still an ear to the ground. 
you know. So if, um, if a person wanted to, say, run for mayor of Brockton, they would come to you and what would you say to them? I would say they should I, be at I, the hold, launch. Hold on, let me interrupt. Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, before anyone gets excited, I'm, we're not, I'm not, this is not a Nick at the Carpenter administration. We're, I'm just asking questions. I got to clip. Brockton is, they get kind of, you know, tough on people right. when you mention certain offices. But right. so if a woman of color wanted to run for mayor of Brockton, what would, how would they begin this process with you? So the first step would be, of course, to come to our launch on Saturday because we're going to talk she about that. <laughs> the Women's Pipeline for Change. There you go. All about how you can get involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you, the, if there are women out there that want to join these workshops and are really serious about getting involved in civic engagement mm -hmm. and public policy, mm -hmm. we will take your name and number and mm -hmm. we'll sign you up for the workshops. Wow. And that will be an eight month session. And then at the end of it, they graduate. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start. So let me just start asking the hardball questions. So you're here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the, uh, these chal the challenges are sl similar to a woman that may be in Florida, a woman that black woman that may be a, black, a woman of color that mm -hmm. may be in North Carolina. Are the are the challenges similar? I think they're similar because, challenges. You know, some, it's just different some states, di dynamics. But yeah. some states are predominantly black, right? right. If you look at a North Carolina, right. a black woman running in that state may not have the same challenges as a woman in Massachusetts. Here. Right. So, so right. what are your thoughts around that? I, I think that they're, they face similar challenges when okay. they go up against politics because more times it yeah. is a man, you know, man led. But the black you know. woman is convoling. Conv but now that's, you guys that, are that, that, the that's vote now. turning. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, when you yeah. talk about 1971, where right. there was only 80 women or so that across the state of Massachusetts right. who were in office of women of color. Right. You know, to today that's tripled, you know, so that are running and that are actually progressive, you know, so we know it's changing. We know that we still have more work to do. So even in those areas like you're talking about mm -hmm. Florida, mm -hmm. I, they still face those Same. issues. Yep. You know, they sit at the table and there's hard questions pointed at them. And mm -hmm. Because they're women, oftentimes they're thinking, they look at them as, well, she's supposed to be at home, mm -hmm. you know, she doesn't know what she's talking about, you know, and I know for myself that's happened even with me, just really? in my work segment, right. like just working with different people, yeah, yeah. you know, and because I'm a woman or and a woman of color, I don't really get the same respect, mm. you know, and you have to earn that and, you know, true, but you also have to demand it. All right, so uh, you know, I still got to ask you another one, a couple of these hard questions. So why did black women not vote for Hillary Clinton? I'm mm. sorry, I got to ask. Well, well. <laughs> um, I think that black women did vote. I but not think, in high, well. Not in high numbers. Yes, yes. Not in high numbers. I, I think, you know, that we had, we were, we were a force out there. I yeah. just think we didn't have the education enough. Really? You know, I really do. I really do. So you don't think that uh, perhaps uh, one of our failures in that, at least in that election, is that people just didn't feel... Uh, black women, some black men, but majority of black women didn't trust Hillary Clinton. Have you heard that? I've heard that. That's I, why I'm asking. I heard that they didn't trust her, but yeah. this is what I, I, my point is that mm -hmm. anytime you're going to vote for anybody, right, right. whatever side it may be, I think you have to do your homework. You have to do your research. You have to look at what you know, that storyline is, right. you know, and a lot of times people just go by hearsay, right? Everyone kind of just jumps on the bandwagon and says, well, you know, I heard that, you know, she can't be trusted. So yeah, everyone right, kind right, of, right. you know, it, it kind of buzzes around, but you got to stand on your own beliefs. Right. You know what I right. mean? So, so you and uh, she and I are mature in terms of our age, you know, uh, we're not giving out age, but let me just, who is our Shirley Chisholm of today? Well, I know it, it, you know who it is. It's, I mean, if you want to, I, I mean, I think it's Ayana. Okay, I do, I do. So if you, so if a young, like I have two daughters that are out here in the studio, what would you say to an eight-year-old and eleven-year-old girl of color coming up, perhaps wants to do community work or get involved with politics? What what sort of examples would you give to her advice? Um, I would definitely. How would you mentor get, them? How would you mentor them? Definitely try to get them to get involved in, you know, if there's public policy in their mm -hmm. school, um, debate team, if they have debate it. Debate team's big. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, that's, you know, something they definitely should get involved in. Even um, like the Women's Pipeline for Change, although this is geared towards older women, you know, um, but there's opportunity for maybe young 
pe young folks, you know, but teenagers. Are you, but you are you are you so are you reaching out to them as a yes. part of your, yes. your methodology? Definitely, because mm -hmm. Mass Vote does also have a youth um, component to mm -hmm. its work. Um, so that's something we've been talking about as a team. How do we engage younger folks in this process as mm -hmm. well? You know, we talk about college students, but even younger than that, high school and middle school, how do we get them to thinking now, you know, mm -hmm. not, you know, later in the game, but ahead of the game? Are you guys going into historical black, black colleges at all? At all? I know me? the youth, I don't, I don't get involved a lot with the youth mm -hmm. track, but I know they definitely have uh, college students who um, uh, volunteer throughout the summer, mm -hmm. and they actually have like a youth summer, um, like institute that they do, so. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of what we're trying to do in the state legislature in, in the Commonwealth, are there, is there any movement? There's still not much diversity in the ranks of, I mean, I'm not talking about just if you're coming out of the Boston area, but we're in Plymouth County. The, there are, you know, not many, or, or if there are any, uh, not many people of color that are elected to a, a office. In Brockton, you have uh, Moses Rodriguez, uh, the president of the Brockton City Council. You have Jean Denacourt, a city council member. Um, but where are, where are, how are we going to increase, and those are men, right. those are men. Right. So how are we going to increase uh, people, women of color in areas that are predominantly white? What message are you all giving to the white voter? Well, I know that's a tough question, but I, I just, you know. Um, well, I think the message is we're, we're, we're moving. We're, we're, we're invigorating our mm -hmm. young black women and um, women How do they not, and how do they not see color? color? And how women do, of color. Yeah, how, right. You know, You're a woman of color, but how do we talk to them so they don't see color? So who doesn't see color? Um, the, 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 the voters. Um, and predominantly white neighborhoods. You, you're a leader, clearly. Mm -hmm. not, it's not only your bio. Clearly mm -hmm. we can see that you're a leader mm -hmm. regardless of race, regardless of right. ethnicity. How do you represent a predominantly white community that may not, or how do you sell a message to a predominantly white community that may not vote for you because they see just Does black see, okay. versus competency? Right. I, I Am I, I making sense? I, yes. Yeah. Um, I definitely think you got to also speak about what's, you know, really, the real issues that yeah. are happening yeah. around you and your community and you as a person, as an individual, as your, as a, someone who has a family, someone who's a mother or a sister or an aunt or a daughter, all of those things are very common threads for mm -hmm. all women, you know, and people. So when you start to talk about real issues that are touching home, you, how can you see color after that? Because at that point, I think that that comes that comes away. Right. You know what I mean? So right. now you have to start to look at the, the real issues and look at uh, what's really happening at that level. And how do I, even if it's a, a person who's not of color, I think that will move them to say, you know, wow, that's impa that's impacting me, you know, impacting my children, my right. life, my community. How, you know, could I not? get involved. So when you look nationally, they're, the nationally, well, nationally and locally, but at least nationally, the politics of what's happening with the Trump administration and, and people that being overtly racist, they're saying whatever they think in their mind. I noticed, so it's a woman's pipeline for change. You didn't put in there black woman's pipeline for change, no. women of color pipeline for change. Was that done purposefully? Um, purposefully? When they when they came up with the name, yeah. I'm I'm not sure if it was done purposely. Yeah. I I think at the time maybe they still were you know broadening it and mm -hmm. trying to figure out how does it you know how does the title you right. know how does it sound to people. Right. Right. So I don't think it was anything specific one way or the other. I just think they just wanted to impact women, right. but their their initiative mm -hmm. and their model mm -hmm. is for women of color. Right. So, so how do you, but how do you push back on the argument that you don't need this anymore, that you should be a part of a larger women's movement versus a, why do you, again, you, I mean, you mm -hmm. did speak to the racism, mm -hmm. but how do you argue that if someone says, well, but we don't need this anymore, America has changed, what is your response to that? Well, we still do need it because we still need, it's just like when people say we, black lives matter. Well, every life matters, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But we still need things that are specific to those issues because those issues are not gone away. Mm -hmm. You know, and black women are still facing certain, you know, challenges when it comes to getting in politics, mm -hmm. you know, and getting involved in government. So until that, the face of that changes, we still need this. What would be the number one thing you would change with respect to black women in politics? The w number one thing I or would- Which you would change? That I would change? Yes. Hmm, that's, that's a- and That's a, a broad a, question. That's a heavy- so, yeah. yeah, so would you, would, 
All right, let me give you an example. Would, again, I gave you the example of someone running for mayor of Brockton. Would you discourage someone from doing that? From running uh, yep, for- from running for mayor? No. Um, how would you encourage them to do it? I would encourage them to get involved in their community. Um, there are a number of different organizations and committees that they can get involved in, mm -hmm. boards they can join. What about education? Education is important as well. You know, I is think it? Is it really I though? think it is important, but I think in the political arena, it's not right. something that is dominant. So would you, I guess what I'm trying to pull out, pull out of you, would you suggest that they look at their life experiences? Definitely. And, 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 and so I guess what I'm trying to say is, is there, is there specifically, do you guys have the, and don't you all take me wrong on this, the type of woman you would want to run for mayor, the type of woman for school committee, the type of woman for city council? Because everybody's not equipped to do all to do each right. every position. Right. right. I definitely believe we have a mix of mm -hmm. uh, women and uh, from all diverse backgrounds who are part of this. I mean, we have women who are from the academia, um, you know, background mm -hmm. who are in the medical field, who are in nonprofits. So you, there's a number of different women from all different backgrounds. And when they go through the spiral workshops, mm -hmm. in these workshops, they share stories. They share their backgrounds, their histories, their struggles, all of the things that they've gone through. And it's a wow. very emotional and passionate moving process. Right. So it's not only just the core of the women's pipeline and we want you know women of color to be able to have a voice and so forth and so on, but this is sort of, this this is a movement, you know, and it's bringing women together to say, you're not alone in this. Yeah, you may be from Trinidad mm -hmm. and I might be from Boston, but we have similar issues that we, we, we face every single day. I cry because I'm a single mother and mm -hmm. sometimes I don't know if I'm being, if I'm doing a great job, right. you know, and, so there's support. but I still need to be strong and right. I want to rule the world, but I need a support to do that. The Women's Pipeline does that. Let me just ask you, you it says here you have online resources. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that quickly. Yes, yeah, so the Women's Pipeline for Change has a website. Uh, it's Women's Pipeline for Change. Mm -hmm. um, and it, when you go on there, there's a list of a number of accomplishments and different things that, you know. Free? Every, all the information is online for free. Okay. Um, the spiral is on for, there. It's for free? Free. <laughs> it's all free. free. Even the workshops are free. So there's no free. excuse. There's no excuse not to get involved and not to even come to the launch to learn about it because I think it will inspire a lot of women. What does your membership in terms of numbers look like right now? Uh, right now, we're, there's probably 100, uh, a little over 100. So you guys um, are really seasoned. Yeah. So what, what are they to expect on Saturday? So Saturday, what's to be expected is mm -hmm. a welcome and overview of the Women's Pipeline for Change and to talk about the history of it and also to really hopefully engage women in getting involved in these workshops and in signing up and hopefully they will feel inspired and want to you know, make some innovative change in their communities and for themselves. So if, um, just to go back because someone wanted me to ask, if you look at... Um, Going back to political campaigns that need to be financed, I just want to clarify, do you provide financing or a system in, go I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. So we don't provide financing, mm -hmm. but as part of the um, education piece of this, yeah. we they talk about how to so do that. So you guys that. have no PAC. So we don't have any backing for that or any funding, right. I mean, for that specifically, mm -hmm. no. not. Um, but we do talk about how to go about getting the resources to do that. So. Do you have a position on the uh, presidential election? We're about to wrap up, so I, I, I got to throw that one out. Come on, come on, <laughs> come on, come on. You're not going to say anything about the uh, Senator Harris? Uh, she's... I'm sorry, but I am You're not like, for oh. Senator Harris. Oh, wait a minute. All right, we're about to have first, the first argument on the NAACP forum. It's about to happen, people. This is gonna... Cut you that know, out. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You're not for Camilla? Really? Okay. All right. We're not gonna push. We're not gonna push. Everybody has their. But preference. I, I think you know, it's wonderful <laughs> that she is a woman of color and yes, she's she running. Yes, she is. I think it's oh. awesome. So wait a minute. Are you guys not gonna invite her like to come in? She definitely could she's... get invited to anything because she's a woman of color yeah, yeah. and she's running for president. For president. <laughs> oh my goodness. That mm -hmm. you just shocked me just now. Just to let you know. Okay. So uh, the time, place for Saturday. The time and place for Saturday is um, Brockton Library, yep. 
uh, 10 a.m. The, the main one, the main the street. The main street, yep, sorry. Yep, yep. Uh, Brockton Library, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Coffee donuts. There will be light refreshments, so okay. coffee and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, all our smiling faces, and we hope to see you there. Do you have a political future? Um, Come on. I, I'm hoping I have one here in Brockton. I mean, I'm now oh, oh. a resident here, and I'm oh, I'm, oh, I'm, oh, oh, oh. I'm looking forward to you know, yeah, um, yeah. definitely learning more about how I can learn how to run my uh, What's your passion? Campaign. What's your passion? Oh, I have my passion. Education. And my passion is, I know, I see your substance is, abuse. Is youth, um, it's youth, education, yeah. and leadership, yeah. but it's more so specifically with um, the prison system. Really? Yes. Are you currently doing work in the prison system? I used to do some work in the prison system okay. with young, but young juveniles who, yeah. were, who were getting arrested, um, specifically uh, young men of color. Yeah. Um, and I have a very strong there's a, passion there's a, for that. There's a lot of young female teenagers yes. that have been mm -hmm. incarcerated. Have yes. you been work? Have you done work with them? Some, but not uh, mostly young men. When I was uh, when I lived wow. out of state. Yeah. So mm -hmm. listen, you so from you're from Florida, right? I was born and raised here in Boston, but I lived in Florida for 14 years. What's your preference, Florida or the Commonwealth? Uh, progressively, I prefer here, but Florida, I would love to be in Florida. Really? So let me just, you, we, we got to wrap it. We can keep going on and on. I get so many questions. The more she talks, the more you know, Bishop, the more questions I have. But let me just ask you this question. Define progressive. What does that mean? So, you know, Florida... But aren't you really like a liberal that's a little bit two notches above I, liberal? I lived in Fort Lauderdale, yeah. so it, it was it's a smaller piece of the pie there. Yeah. So the the type of work that I was in, coalition work and things yeah. of that nature, yeah. you kind of, you're, you're buttoning into the heads of the same people. Right, so it's right. really hard to move and push through and move okay. up. You know, there's not as much opportunity. Um, so being here back home, I know there's more opportunity for that. Right. Um, so who knows? You know, you never know. Maybe I can run for, for position here and listen, then listen take something somewhere progressive else. Progressive candidate, <laughs> Shahara Jagu. And she's got the name that will get her elected. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming in, explaining this program with us, uh, because I know that there's uh, many women, women of color uh, that want to run for office, that need resources, and you, you're dedicated to people of color, mm -hmm. which is so, so important yeah. because there's, there's really not much in terms of uh, cohesiveness that we can rely on each other. But uh, she's done it today, you all. Again, mm -hmm. when is it? Saturday? Saturday, February 23rd, 10 to 12. We hope to see you at the Brockton Public Library, Main Street. Thank you for tuning in to Brockton's Choice for Civil Rights News. We'll see you again. Thank you. Lift every voice and sing till